You are listening to the Disney Dream Girls, an unofficial Disney theme parks podcast. And this is show, wow, 461 for the 2nd of July, 2023. Where dreams begin. Hello and welcome to this week's Disney Dream Girls. My name is Michelle Young and together with my jolly good chum, Jane Phipps, we are your guides to the place where dreams begin. Hello there, Janie. Hello there, Michelle, and how are we this very fine summery week? Enjoying the sunshine. I think my te- my legs have gone to that nice, subtle, tanned look rather than pasty chalk white. <laughs> so, I'm, you know, I'm enjoying the nice sunshine. I'm not enjoying working in it. But yeah, it's 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 nice because I know that in the summer I'm going to get a little bit of sunshine when I'm in California. And then obviously mm. when I'm in Alaska, I am not going to get any sunshine. Well, it might just be a bit on the chill side, mightn't it? True, true. I was excited the other day, though. I was able to book in my port arrival time for our cruise and I got the earliest option, so I'm dead happy. Very nice. Very excited about that. And my lovely friend Tommy and Lena Allison are on their jollies at the moment. They are. In Norway, and they are sending me the most amazing pictures jen you are gonna have a feast at some of the parts you are going to because it is so beautiful yeah i must admit i think it's uh, a lot of a lot of the scenery aspect is what i'm looking forward to actually just the difference to what you lo- what you used to locally isn't it it looks stunning jen it mm. really really does so i am very excited for you and i know you will have an amazing time on the dream yeah, and I've just I've gone and ordered myself a lanyard. I'm get, I'm getting all geeky now, so I have with the, by the power of Etsy, I've got myself a, a a suitably Disney cruise lanyard winging its way to me. Simon didn't want didn't want one though. Funny didn't that, and no, funny. Mm. Yeah. You mm. do know you could take your Mister Toad popcorn bucket and put popcorn in it on the cruise. I didn't. I don't know if it's still offer free. Um, reloads of it, but imagine taking your Mr. Toad and actually having popcorn in your Mr. Toad while watching one of the high caliber Disney shows. I never thought about that. And because you're going from Southampton, you're not really going to be worried about your luggage allowance. No, this is true. So just putting it out there, Jane. Uh, yeah, it's whatever I can fit in the car and then can get from the car onto the ship. Easy yeah. peasy. I'm just trying to fathom out how you can manage to freeze me some Mickey bars. <laughs> pray for really cold weather no because that wouldn't be nice for you guys no then. Well, why yeah well just really cold weather on the last day and then on the way home some sort of freezer block situation or liquid nitrogen it's not going to work is it no no but you know we'll think of other things I'll, right. I'll, I'll take the hit for you and I'll, I'll have one on your behalf just one well you know i was trying to be polite yeah <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just pitying Disney. They're going to take such a hit on how many steaks you guys are going to eat and how much bacon you're going to have on this holiday. It's going to be unreal. Yeah, but that means we'll we'll free up some of the sweeter stuff for other people. So it's it's all swings and roundabouts, isn't it's it? It's a balance. It's a balance, yeah. It's a balance. Right, Jen, I gather you have some history. I have got some history. I'm going to... Um, I've got it split between the first and the second. So we'll start with the first july we'll be chronological about it shall we um this this is going to go to 1975 Mm -hmm. at disney world one of yours and mine's favorite attractions ever opened the wedway people mover as it was called then oh yeah it's just it's one of those rides isn't it you go "Mm -hmm, i want to be on it now and i'm sat here as i'm recording i'm looking at my little funko people mover characters looking back at me so, yeah, so 1975, 1st of July, People Mover opened. Then I'm going to talk about a couple of ladies that both sadly passed away on this day. One passed away in 1996 and another in 2010. But a couple of Disney legends that I thought was um, uh, worth mentioning, shall we say. Go on then. Um, so the first Disney legend was um, Eileen Woods. Now, Eileen was spoke and sang the voice of Cinderella, and she passed away on this day at age 81. She was born in 1929. She and he first appeared on radio at the age of 14, where she met the songwriters 
whose songs would then make her the star of Cinderella. There's a lovely little phrasing, and it's <laughs> I just read the little phrasing of her meeting Walt, and I, I've just got this image of a very sophisticated lady um, saying it in, a, in a, a, an era that is no longer with us. It's just a phrasing. She just says, I did the discs for them in a studio with a piano. bibbidi bobbidi boo So this is, your, this is love. A dream is a wish your heart makes. Two days later, Walt called. He wanted me to come over and have an interview. I gladly said, yes, any time you say. We met and talked for a while. And he said, how would you like to be Cinderella? And I just thought that was lovely. It was like, just a very matter of fact. And yes, I'll be Cinderella, just like that. Oh. And then the other lady, and the other lady that sadly passed away on this day was Betty Lawyer Kimball. So the name should give that away. So obviously married to Ward Kimball, one of the original nine old men. Uh, she passed away at the age of 97 on this day. She was hired in 1935 by Walt Disney Productions, and then she married Ward Kimball a year later. When they were married for 66 years. Um, and she worked her way up the ranks at Disney, um, doing the painting of the cells, and then also choosing colours and creating colour models for the work, uh, for the guide work of other painters. She didn't work there that long. She left in 1938 to raise a family. But I think, you know, two women who, for their time in history, probably um, were doing things that were not the norm for women. So I thought they were they needed to be given a mention on today. Absolutely. And then on the 2nd of July, we'll have one for the 2nd of July, and you'll like this one. This is a birthday in 1958 of a certain artist and storyteller and possibly the greatest Disneyland cast member of all time. Maynard. Maynard. Maynard Smith. I thought, how can I not mention Maynard on his birthday? Oh, thank you, Jay. Yeah. I've I've got a... A link now to a, a particularly dear friend of mine's birthday. Okay. Anthony Markham, 4th of yeah. July. Happy birthday to you. But there was also a very famous Disney baby born on the 4th of July, Jane. Did you know about this one? No, I didn't. Enlighten me. It is claimed in 1979 on the 4th of July, the very first baby was born at Disneyland in California. Actually, at the resort. Six pound ten ounces, Teresa Salcedo is born to Rosa and Elias on a bench behind Plaza Inn. Can you imagine giving birth in a theme park? And never one to shy away from the publicity, they did a special ceremony where Mickey Mouse personally gave the family a birth certificate stating Disneyland birth certificate number one. Wow, I thought for a minute there you were going to say Mickey Mouse delivered the baby, but that would have been different entirely. Completely. Scared the kid for life. <laughs> but thinking about it, if you were going to give birth to some to a child in Disney World or Disneyland or any Disney theme park, th- there are better places than a park bench. There would be, yes. But I always remember when I was um, blessed to be pregnant with my two, there was also a thing in this country that if you went if your waters broke or you went into labour in certain department stores it was always a good idea because the rumour was that you'd get showered with goodies mm. so would the same apply if you have a baby in Disney World or Disneyland do you get like a lifetime free pass or something you got a birth certificate saying Disneyland birth certificate number one and that's it it is an urban myth that they got lifetime park entry and things like that. So Uh-oh. unless someone is able to prove me different, but my mm. research says no. But I could, I, you know, I could, I could sort of think of a real, you know, a lot more comfier place. You know, yeah. Can you imagine giving birth in the Cinderella suite inside mm. uh, the castle in Walt Disney World? Yeah, but you wouldn't want to get it messy though, would you? <laughs> well, it's not my job to clean it up. <laughs> you see, I, I don't know. I, my my darlings all, all came out of the sunroof. I had a C-section, so... Uh. And before we alienate all our male <laughs> listeners, I will move on from that topic. Swiftly on, yeah. Very, very swiftly. And I've got some Tron news. Oh, OK. What's happening with Tron? Well, there's an attraction. Correct. There's a lot of merch. Correct. And where there's a lot of merch, there's a lot of Disney profit. Yeah, okay. And what stimulates more merch? Mm-hmm. Another film. Is there? There is. Ooh. I, did, I, I stumped Jane on this. Yeah. Evan Peters has joined the cast of Tron Ares 
aka Tron 3. And this is according to the Hollywood Reporter. So don't shoot me if it is wrong, but Evan Peters is known for portraying Dharma. Yeah. In the Jeffrey Dahmer story, and he was magnificent in that. He was so good. He appeared in One Division, yeah, and in the X Men franchise, he was Quicksilver. Yes, yeah. So he's got quite a few acting credits in his name, and yeah, very excited. It's going to be set in a bit more real world context than previous Tron One and Two, and I do gather that it is going to be based on a soldier in the computer word, uh, world and an awkward gamer in the human world. And, yeah, and it's going to do lots of merch and people who want to go on the attraction and it's going to sell loads and loads. Oh, I shall uh, be intrigued to see and learn more about that. Yeah, absolutely. I've not seen a date for when this supposed film is meant to be coming out. Yeah, well, Hollywood's got a lot of issues at the moment because with the, with the writer's strike happening, it's causing a lot of things to be talked about and not an awful lot of things happening. So uh, I think that will... Uh, any dates for, for film releases uh, should always be taken with a pinch of salt at the moment because they could move quite drastically. Absolutely. Right, Jane, there is a... Qu uh, a quartet of Disney-ish movies that I love. I okay. grew up watching them. Right. They, to me, are, well, three of them, are sacrosanct. And every single time I'm feeling, oh, what should we do? I always suggest watching it because it's one of those films you can sit back, you can enjoy. It involves things that I really enjoy, a little bit of sort of historical Accuracy with good storytelling. Okay. Are you with me with the film franchise? I think I may be. Go on then, spoil it for everyone. What is it? Are we talking Indiana Jones? Dun, 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 <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Absolutely. And we are still incredibly blessed that we have the stunt spectacular mm. at Disney's Hollywood Studios. We do indeed. And I've got some facts about it. Go on, then. Then I've got some information, and then I've got some questions for you. Oh, no, you didn't tell me there's going to be questions involved today. That's why I didn't tell you. Oh, here we go. So, the boulder that chases Indiana Jones, mm -hmm. it actually weighs £400 and is made of rubber. Okay. According to the Disney Parks blog, the character who is playing Indiana Jones has to change into a brand new costume after every show because of wear and tear. Wow. Mm -hmm. And the punchy sticks, you know those sticks that shoot up? Mm -hmm. And Indy's trying to sort of dodge them. Yes, yeah. They are controlled by square sensors that are triggered depending on where Indiana Jones steps. Ah, uh, okay, clever. Mm -hmm. Now... In this article that I was reading, they, they've had to put in place a lot of contingencies because sometimes scenes might not go exactly to the footsteps of how it should be. So you might be watching it and thinking it's absolutely gone off without a problem, but the performers themselves are constantly risk assessing, mm. maybe trying to do things a bit different. And they have so many contingencies. In that boulder scene at the beginning, there's 12 different contingencies. Wowzers. And it's really, really interesting. And there's some video clip and some more information on the Parks blog if you would like to go over and watch that. Well, it's good to hear, though, isn't it? Because obviously these guys are doing these stunts for, for real whilst you're sitting there in front of them. And you tend to forget that sometimes you know and it's um it's it's worth remembering that things things can go wrong so their risk assessment process is going to have to be uh extremely high standards extremely high absolutely not long though to indiana jones and the dial of destiny mm. are we hoping that this is of the quality of the original trilogy i would like to hope unfortunately i don't think it Having read quite a few um, movie reviews, I'm, I'm not holding out an awful lot of hope. Oh, dear. Mm. I've started re-watching. Yes, okay. 
So I'm really excited. I've, I've, I've watched the first one and the first one to me was really amazing. Yeah. Although it hasn't held to the test of time on some of those special effects. Yeah, I think you have to, um, with any movie, when you go back and watch them, particularly from that, from that sort of era when special effects were probably coming into a new realm, it's it's really interesting to watch. But And just remember what they didn't have available that we take for granted nowadays when we're watching movies. And then you realise just how ingenious and how clever all these special effects and prop makers for the time actually were. I, I love going back and looking and and figuring out, you know, how things were done, how things were made. I think it's absolutely fascinating. And people making the most of the materials that were available at the time and their ingenuity and the budgets is um, quite awe-inspiring, actually. Yeah. Well, moving away from Raiders of the Lost Ark mm. to Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom... Mm-hmm. I absolutely love this one as well. I think the character Willie and Short Round just <laughs> bring a lot of comedic effect into it. And I think the script writers had a lot more fun with this film. However, it was very controversial at the time. Okay. Because of the extravagant feast they're partooking at Pancot Palace. All right. Okay. So if you remember, the feast consisted of a huge fully alive snake filled with other smaller snakes, mm. giant beetles, eyeball mm. soup, mm. Oh yeah, and for dessert, chilled monkey brains, so straight from the skull. You, Yeah, and poor, poor Willie, she couldn't manage it. She couldn't manage to eat it. But in reality, the food in that scene, um, yeah, you'd be dead. <laughs> It's just, yeah, it's yeah. it's just not happening. No, not I wouldn't happening. be touching any of it, no. And seemingly, I did actually find out, and this is to do with something I was teaching at school, is that if you eat a poisonous snake and you consume the poison, even though the snake is dead, that poison can still be fatal. Oh, okay. So that would be bad. I remember, I remember that next time somebody presents snake in front of me. Yeah. I don't Mm. think I'd want to ever eat snake. It's just, no. no. So. Yeah. I've got some questions for you. Oh, goodness me. Listeners, play along. See if you can get the answers. And I've been really kind, Jane. I'm starting off with some really easy ones. Oh, yeah. Go on. What was Indiana Jones' worst fear? Snakes. Raiders of the Lost Ark, Indiana Jones has held a deep fear of snakes Mm. and in the Last Crusade showed the origin of snakes phobia. Can you remember where that came in? No, it's a long while since I've watched it. Well, River Phoenix, who played the teenager of Indy, falls into a tank full of snakes on that circus train. Oh, of course, yes. I want to remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we all love uh, in Harrison Ford as Indiana Jones. I think he plays the role fantastically. Mm, yeah, definitely. What is the link to Figment on who played that character? Oh, who was going to play that character first? So who was going to play Indiana Jones before Harrison Ford? Uh huh. I have no idea. Is a link to Figment? I still have no idea. Well, where did you get? The idea of a first phrase of it being a figment of the imagination. What popular 1980s, or was it even 70s, TV show Higgins mentions it's a figment of the imagination. Any idea? No, I'm struggling. Oh, you mustn't have had the childhood I have. Magnum P.I.? Oh, okay. Tom Selleck was originally penciled in for the role. Yeah, I suppose he was quite big at that time, wasn't he, doing those similar types of roles Mm. as well. Mm. Yeah. Okay, how much is Harrison Ford worth? A lot. How many million? I'm giving you a clue there. I'm I'm, I'm saying it's in the millions. Well, I could have guessed it was in the millions. A lot of millions? A lot of millions. It is a lot of millions. It's a three-digit lot of millions. So hundreds of millions. Yes. (laughs) I'm not going to get an answer out of me, are you? Nope. (laughs) A few hundred. He has got a net worth of $300 million. 
He's done all right for himself, hasn't he? Bless him. Yeah, well, when you think of the franchises he's been involved with... Yeah. He's the ninth highest paid actor in Hollywood. Okay. So, you're not doing so bad on this quiz. No, well, <laughs> yeah. I think I might be instructing you to re-watch the films, but I will let you off and not make you watch Crystal Skull because I like you. Thank you. It's, it's, I will admit to it being quite a while since I've watched any in, uh, Indiana Jones. Okay, so Indiana Jones has a scar. Yes. His well-known scar was on Harrison Ford's chin even before it was written into some of his movies. Yes. In Indiana Jones, it was from that, it was written in that he got it when he was being played by River Phoenix with the whip. Okay, yeah. In Working Girl, it was also put into the theme of Working Girl. Right. But how did he actually get that scar on his chin? Oh, you know what? This is going to be one of those ones when you tell me, I'm going to go, yeah, I knew that. And I want to... See, I'm tempted to say it's something to do with carpentry, but I could be wrong. I think I'm probably wrong. You are wrong. Oh. But that would have been, would have been my knowledge of Harrison Ford, because obviously he did start out life as a carpenter. True. You know. But it's nothing to do with carpentry. Oh, well, that would have been really nice if I got it right. Yeah. Um, he put his... He lost control of his car whilst putting on his seatbelt while driving. That's because you put your seatbelt on before you start driving. And that's how he got his world famous scar. Well, I suppose it's it's brought him a lot of um, notoriety, shall we say, and, and it's probably helped his look for lots of his movies. So maybe it wasn't that an unfortunate event, but you know. The sort of ruggedy kind of look. Yeah, yeah. But you know, people seatbelt on first, then drive. Absolutely. Although, it, I don't know about you, but my car sort of flashes up a little icon on the control panel. Sort of oh, like, man beeps at me. Yeah, indica- yeah, indicating that you need to put your seatbelt on. You shouldn't be driving. And sometimes if my handbag is particularly happy and heavy, full of lots of goodies, it will start beeping as well. Yeah, I've had that happen before when I put something on the back seat and it wants me to put the back seat seatbelts on. It's like, it's it's a box. No. Mm. How are you doing with the emails from Disney at the moment, Jane? Are you getting a lot from Shop Disney? Um, I don't seem to have been getting as many as I have previously because I've had both your good self and my daughter send me emails saying, have you seen this? <laughs> and, I, and I haven't seen whatever I've been pointed at. I keep getting a lot of emails from Walt Disney World wanting me to sign up and, buy, and purchase a, a vacation. Yeah, they're probably looking at the record saying, buy it, Jane, you haven't been for 10 years. Get yourself it's, sorted, it's, lass. Well, it is. I am, I am slacking a little bit, to be fair. Mm. I literally cannot go two days without them sending me an email at the moment saying 20% off, 30% off, free shipping over $60 or £50 or this, that and the other. It's telling me that perhaps they're struggling a little bit and I have noticed that there are a lot of discounts coming out at the moment and promotions, for example, Disney Visa members can save up to 30% on Disneyland Resort stays. Yeah, I must admit... um... I I do watch quite a few different um, YouTube vloggers that tend to look at the financial side of Disney as a whole. Um, their share price is um, scarily low at the moment. And, um, yeah, they are struggling to make money as far as, particularly in the film uh, aspect, when you look at what they've spent over the last year as far as film output is concerned and what they've taken in doesn't really... Uh, marry up very well at all so uh, yeah and I mean I don't know about you Michelle I'm seeing quite a lot of uh, different YouTube vloggers talking about lower crowds and things like that so Mm. yeah interesting times I fear yeah because I think the majority of people who had trips cancelled during Covid time who, who were planning on going have pretty much now had sufficient time to get those put on the books and either have them or be having them shortly, because we've got to bear in mind for the UK guest, it's coming up to July and August, where we traditionally go over to Florida because it's our school holidays. Mm. The American school systems are on holiday mostly now, so it's their busy time for summer, but I'm not seeing parks being packed at 
crowd ratings of 10 and 9. I'm seeing 6s and 5s some days. Yeah, I mean, I think what struck me was I was watching a vlogger oh, just a couple of weeks ago and they were able to snag a dining reservation at Storybook, whatever it's called, over at, uh, Animal, uh, sorry, at Wilderness Lodge. Oh, yeah, the uh, that replaced Artist Point has got you, you meet your characters and things. And it was like, I thought, oh, yeah, they planned it in. And then they let slip that they'd booked it that morning. Yeah, I've been seeing a lot, particularly for Be Our Guest, coming available. Mm. I think the popularity of some of these eateries are in decline. And perhaps if you've got children that want to see the princesses, instead of going over to Artist Point and instead of going over to Be Our Guest, again, another high-cost one, they're perhaps considering maybe going to Akashus mm. and having a different wealth of characters over there and trying out the menu options there because I'm, I'm not hearing great reviews at the moment about Be Our Guest. I've had quite a few listeners of the show get in touch and say they'd been and they wasn't impressed, it felt rushed, it felt that the food quality wasn't what they'd expect and for the price limit as well. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, you know, it's an interesting time at the moment. It's, and like you say, Michelle, we've kind of come, we're post-pandemic years. People have perhaps had that vacation they couldn't have during during those couple of years. For the UK, like you say, you know, perhaps we're, this is kind of maybe going to be that, the last hurrah of people who had vacations cancelled and might now be getting, you know, that cancelled one back on the books um and then you take into account you know cost of living and 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 what have you so there's going to be an element isn't there of all those factors are going to feed into the spending power of your customers once they get there so you might have customers coming through the gate but if they haven't got that extra cash and you're going to be have, you're going to have to weigh up and if you're seeing reviews online that aren't maybe as complimentary as they once were you're going to end up thinking twice about it's an awful lot of money we're a family of four is it worth our way? And then they say, when you've got other options like Akashus, which I've seen some really nice reviews for recently, mm. you know, you're going to think and like look further afield perhaps and figure out where you want to go. Yeah. It's also been very interesting to see how, in our little community about what people are thinking with regards to the Christmas offerings, Jollywood Nights versus Mickey's Very Merry. And mm. a lot of people have sort of said, well, it's non-negotiable. Every year we've got to do Mickey's very merry but a fair few are sort of thinking hang on a minute Jollywood Nights is a bit cheaper and it's got new things that I will have never seen before and I think the big draw of the Muppets particularly is getting people very excited mm. about that and I do believe as the show is being aired people will have been had having the opportunity to buy their tickets and it will be interesting to see which sells the quickest is it going to be Jollywood yeah. or is it going to be Mickey's Very Merry and of course before all of that we have got the Oogie Boogie Bash over in Disneyland and we've got the Halloween party as well yeah it's going to be interesting to see how these all pan out because you know historically certain dates particularly have sold out extraordinarily quickly for these types of events so perhaps that will give us a better lay of the land as to what people's um, either the volume of people attending the parks and when they do attend, what's their priority at the moment? Yeah, it'll be interesting to see because the events do start running in November. So if you're planning a December trip and the dates aren't selling out, you might be able to get the opportunity to view select clips mm. of the events to make an, a more informed decision on the offering. That's very, yeah, very, very good point particularly with a new event like Jollywood Nights, you're not quite sure on what it's actually going to involve. And it, it is always a bit, it's a bit of an extra amount of money. Am I going to fi feel like I've got that value for my money yeah, that I'm handing over it, to Disney? If you're going to be prepared to spend that chunk of money, are you going to turn around and say, well, actually, let's keep to uh, Mickey's Very Merry because I know what I'm getting for that money. Mm. Yeah, mm. tough one. Hopefully 67 Tupperwares of cookies. <laughs> Although I did listen to a vlog the other day and they were complaining about last year's generosity of cookies. So uh, we shall see on that one. Maybe mm. it's going to the the days like when I went to the Halloween party last year. They weren't as generous with their cookie, with their uh, 
candy offerings and particularly for guests that had an allergy they ran out of the tokens on the party night I went to so you couldn't get your tokens so you had to go all over and then try and find a place that had tokens and then in the end I just gave up and I went over to the place where they were giving out the gift bags but what I got as a allergy person in comparison to someone who was non-allergy was like minuscule. It was mm. tiny. It didn't even half fill my free bag that they gave you. Yeah, which is not good because I say that's kind of part and parcel of, t- of paying the premium price that you're paying is to get those quotes on quotes, you know, air quotes, um, freebies, isn't it? Yeah. The, uh, you know, the lifetime supply of Snickers. <laughs> we shall see. Anyway. I hope you've enjoyed this week's show as we have uh, a little bit of a a random bag of uh, chat there for you. Please, please, please check us out on Instagram at Girls. We are sharing current content from people that are sending us pictures in on to us and we are sharing past content of past trips, how Disney is infiltrating and travel is infiltrating our daily life and we love sharing it with all of you. You can also pop on over to our website, DisneyDreamGirls.com and that's a really good way to find past shows and if you'd like to, go look up some of them with the wonderful Jim Carcass and while you're listening and thinking, wow, what an amazing man he is, why don't you uh, consider purchasing one of his books because Jim is is in recovery at the moment Mm. from major surgery and he's not working so he has got bills so he would very much appreciate a little bit of support if we're if you're wanting to buy someone a gift buy them a Jim Carcass gift because it's the gift that keeps giving definitely you can also get extra content from us patreon.com forward slash Disney Dream Girls we put a couple of shows out exclusively just for our supporters and you can also catch each Sunday show in advance of everybody else anyway Until next week, it's a goodbye from me. And goodbye from me.